Hello, everyone. My name is Jose Corona, and I'm a PhD student at the Laboratory of Marine Environmental Sciences of the Sea in Brittany, France. Today, I will talk about the first chapter of my doctoral research, where we evaluate immunohistochemistry as a tool to densifier the subcellular mechanisms involved in the accumulation and long retention of the ficotoxin domoic acid in the King Scallop pectin maximus. My doctoral thesis is supervised by Caroline Fabiu and Elena Gay. Domoic acid is a toxin produced by at least 26 bloom forming species of the atoms of the genus Pseudonychia and is responsible from the, for the amnesic shellfish poisoning in humans. It's a neuroexcitatory amino acid and a structural analog of some neurotransmitters in mammals. And I will not go into toxicological details. It's only important to keep in mind that domoic acid is an extremely dangerous toxin for humans since it can, can cause from a simple diarrhea or vomiting to more severe complications such as disorientation, memory loss, hallucinations, or even coma or death. The real problem is that during Pseudonychia blooms, this toxin can be accumulated in large amounts and even for years by the King Scalop pectin maximus, which is a high valuable resource in Europe and is the third more, in, more important fishery species in France. This seriously threatens public health, leading to extensive prolonged fishery and aquaculture closures, and consequently to, save, to severe economic losses. Now, we know that there are important interspecific differences in the accumulation and depuration kinetics of the moic acid, even among, among the species of the pectinity family. While some species, such as pectin maximus, depurate the toxin from months to years, other pectinids, such as Clamys varia or Algopectin purpuratus, can detoxify this toxin in a few hours or even in some days. Therefore, the most important thing for now is to identify the causes of these differences in pectin maximus as soon as possible. It has been proposed that up to 90% of the toxin of the moic acid is accumulated in the digestive gland of pectin maximus and is found in a free dissolved form in the cytoplasm of the digestive cells. Another idea uh, for the slow decontamination of this toxin is that in this species could be the, could, could be the absence of, the, of some membrane receptors to properly transport it and excrete it. How, however, these ideas are not, still, are not still clear. Our hypothesis is that if there are profound differences between slow and fast domoic acid depurators within the pectinity family, then the answer to our question could be at the level of the ingestion of the, to of the toxin, its recognition and transporting, the distribution between the tissues, the metabolism, or the excretion of the, of the toxin. That's why the main question of this work is to know what are the main subcellular mechanisms involved in the accumulation and long retention of the moic acid in pectin maximus. To answer this question, we collect 20 adult scallops from three different sites of the northwest coast of Brittany in France after toxic blooms of Pseudonychia in the year 2019 in Concarneau, in the year 2020 in the Bay of Brest, and in 2021 in Camaret. Since the digestive gland accumulates more than 90% of the total domoic acid burdens in the scallops, this organ was separated from the rest of the tissues and it was the main target of this study. In the digestive gland, domoic acid was quantified by HPLC and in situ localized with an immunohistochemical technique protocol based on the use of a primary, of a primary antibody capable to, to detect or to recognize the domoic acid on the, tissue, on the tissue samples contaminated with domoic acid. And subsequently, this primary antibody is recognized by a secondary antibody conjugated to a peroxidase, which in the presence of the correct substrate, it's capable to produce a chromogenic or brown colored product that indicates the presence of the toxins on the samples. We also apply a uh, multichromic staining to the samples to detect neutral glycoconjugates, mucus and proteins, and uh, the routine nematoxidinosine staining to 
in order to try to identify some histopathologies related to the accumulation of the toxins in the tissues. Also, some of the digestive uh, gland uh, samples contaminated with domoic acid were analyzed by transmission, transmission electron microscopy. And concerning to the rest of the tissues, these were only treated with the immunohistochemical technique and with the rest of the histological st stainings. The toxin quantification analysis revealed significant differences in the amount of the moic acid accumulated in the digestive gland of the scallops from the three different sampling sites. The highest burdens of the toxin were recorded in animals from Concarneau with uh, 200 to 700 milligrams of toxin per kilo, followed from those from Camaret with an average amount of domoic acid of uh, 80 milligrams per kilo, as you can see here in the image. And the significant lowest values uh, of the toxin were detected in the scallops collected from the bio breast with uh, almost two or one milligram of toxin per kilo. For the first time, an immunohistochemical technique allowed it to the to in situ detect the phycotoxin in contaminated bivalve tissues. In the digestive gland contaminated uh, with domoic acid between 60 and 700 milligrams of toxin per kilo, the chromogenic signal of domoic acid was found mainly in the cytoplasm of the digestive cells in the digestive gland. The signal was found trapped in a small inclusion bodies of, uh, of around one micron of diameter. And this small inclusion bodies did not acquire any kind of coloration in the, in the negative control of the, of the immunohistochemical technique, nor with the routine hematoxylinosin staining, but they acquire a dark uh, violet coloration, as you can see here in the images, in the, in the cytoplasm of, this, of the digestive cells. And, it, and this indicates the presence of some neutral glycoconjugates uh, that are common or commonly found in the membrane surface of, in the membrane surfaces of other cells. Any kind of histopathology related to the accumulation of domoic acid in the digestive gland was observed. And it's important to mention that after a subcellular fractionation analysis of digestive glands of pectin maximus contaminated with domoic acid, Blanco and collaborators conclude that about 90% of the toxin accumulated in this organ was free and dissolved in the cytoplasm of the digestive cells. Indeed, actually in this work, as you can see here in these images, almost all the immune signal corresponding to domoic acid was found in the cytoplasm of digestive, of digestive cells. But this is not as simple as that, since the chromogenic signal is trapped in small inclusion bodies. Uh, so, so the mechanism involved in the accumulation of this toxin in the digestive gland is much more complicate that use the absence of membrane receptors to transport it or to excrete it. The immunohistochemical technique developed in this work proved to have a, a detection sensitivity to domoic acid pretty similar to that of techniques such as HPLC or, El or ELISA, since it's allowed to detect a slight uh, chromogenic signal corresponding to the toxin uh, in the samples of contaminated digestive glands of pectin maximus with around one or two milligrams of toxin per kilo. Concerning to the rest of the tissues, in all the scallops contaminated between two to 700 uh, milligrams of toxin per kilo, the immunoreactivity by domoic acid was only observed in the mucus that lines the epithelium of the stomach and also in the mucus producing cells of the intestine and in the mucus producing cells of the spawning channels in the gonads. The presence of the mucus in these structures where, where the chromogenic signal to the moic acid was observed, it was confirmed by the multichromic staining as you can see here in these images. These globose uh, cells have a, a light blue coloration that indicates the presence of mucus. And any kind of histopathologies related to the accumulation of the toxin were observed in the rest of the tissues. So in this sense, it is important to figure out 
if this is a simple chemical affinity of the toxic of the toxin for the mucus, or if the moic acid is actually covalently bounded to any of the components of the mucus. Transmission electron microscopy analysis allowed the identification of the small inclusion bodies with positive signal to the moic acid distributed throughout the cytoplasm of the, dig of the digestive cells as autophagosomal vesicles. Autophagosomes are involved in the ingestion and digestion of endogenous and exogenous materials, and also with the accumulation of undigestible or indigestible materials for undefined periods of time. The evidence of this work suggests that autophagy could be the subcellular process behind the high accumulation rates and the long retention of the moic acid infected maximus. Finally, we can say that for the first time, an immunohistochemical method has been successfully applied for the in-situ detection of apicotoxin in contaminated by valve tissues. The immune signal of the moic acid localized by immunohistochemistry seems to be related to the amount of toxin quantified by HPLC. We are already working on digital image analysis to corroborate this idea. And it appears that autophagy plays a crucial role as one of the main subcellular mechanisms involved in the accumulation of the moic acid in the king scala of pectin maximus. For this reason, we are currently working on ecophysiological and molecular biology analysis to support this hypothesis. The results of this first part of my doctoral research provide a better understanding on the fate of the moic acid in marine bivalves and in toxicokinetics in the King Scalo Pectin Maximus. Thank you very much for your attention. Here you can find my email and my social networks in case you wish to contact me to ask me anything related to this presentation or to my doctoral research. Have a nice day.